Howdy folks, Tex Grebner here with Tex Grebner Outdoors. Now there's been a lot of to-do made recently over some viral videos about the weaponization of archery equipment in a modern world and on previous war battlefields. However, I'm all dressed up in cosplay right now because that's about how seriously I take this. But with that being said, I do think that for a scavenger, in the event of a long-term disaster, there are some things that you can look for that will make archery viable for you. With that being said, though, I'm not eager to end up in some spin-off of Fallout and Skyrim. You know, peace, it's great. So right now, I'm going to show you just how easy it is to have a practically unlimited supply of scavenged arrows from a sporting goods store. This is the riser of my Samick Sage. This is an NAP Flipper 2. What this rest allows me to do with this bow is shoot plastic veins. This is nothing more than an XX75 Game Getter .500. So let's say in this weird end time scenario everything's picked over but you find a recurve and you find one of these rests as long as you know how to tune this, put a knocking point on it, and how to actually assemble the point on an arrow, you've now viably weaponized archery in a apocalyptic scenario. Now, of course, you can see my super badass back quiver. And hey, guess what? I didn't lose any arrows. So fuck you. Anyways, there you can see I've got a target set up. And if I'm going to claim that this is viable, then I need to demonstrate that. So I'm going to pace it off to about 20 yards-ish. I don't have a laser range guided eye. Musashi said, always grasp your sword as if you intend to cut a man down. That applies to archery in a weaponized form as always shoot like you mean it. Come to a full draw and impart all of your lethal survival energy into your arrow. But in all reality, if you are reduced to using archery as a weapon against your fellow man in that sad event, stealth is your greatest weapon. Now you see, this target is approximately the size of a human torso, roughly speaking, at least in width. And it was pretty hasty shooting and I literally just picked up this bow. This Samick Sage is not my everyday bow. 
not by a long shot. So I'm actually very unfamiliar with it. So it is kind of an accurate representation of a scavenged piece of equipment. Now as you can see, this flipper allows me to with quite a bit of accuracy shoot veined arrows. Now while I do not expect us to end up in a Mad Max, Fallout, or Far Cry, or Skyrim-like Dragon Apocalypse, this applies to you in this peaceful, while violent, modern world in a non-weaponization stance simply because this takes the elitism out of archery. Yeah, sure, this is a wicked cool looking bow, but it can be obtained for under $200. And what normally scares people off from getting into archery is the cost of arrows. But a Samic Sage with a flipper rest, a knocking point, as you can see there, can be obtained for under $200 with a flipper rest that you buy aftermarket and you can shoot any arrows. Of course arrows that are matched for your particular piece of equipment. But the simple fact of the matter is this now takes the elitism out of traditional archery. It is absolutely attainable and while it is not ideal, these arrows, if they had broadheads on them, do have a history of killing deer and other game animals. Now, in the interest of cosplay and general badassness, I figured I'd give you some bonus footage on my battle quiver. Ish. So anyways, first of all, the bow is a Samick Sage in 50 pounds. It's got an NAP flipper rest on it. And I'm capable of shooting basically your drugstore style variety of arrow. Now the quiver itself is made up of a battle belt with an Alice belt, a Marine Corps Alice harness, a Condor shotgun scabbard with the Alice harness woven through the molly and as you can see I have it outfitted for my backup weapon for when shit really goes down being three Glock mags Safari Land drop leg with a Streamlight TLR1 and of course a plus two blaze plate and I'm running excess tritium sights. Now what's actually really cool is on a Samic Sage you can technically, and I've done a video on it, mount a surefire flashlight to your bow and arrow. Now back quivers are somewhat foolish to be honest with you but they do look really fucking cool. And so that's why I decided to build this apocalyptic back quiver because it looks fucking bitchin'. And I do have a tutorial on how to actually put it together that I'll also link. And for those of you that are wondering, it does hold up to three dozen arrows. So, you've technically got the equivalent of a 30 round mag, if you know what I mean. Right now, I actually only have 29 arrows in it and one on the bow. But what's also nice about the XX-75s, while I dislike them as a hunting arrow, they do have a long history with archery within the 20th and 21st century. And as you saw, they do work. But they're so economical when combined with a Samick Sage and a Flipper Rest that 
like I say, it takes the elitism out of archery. You can get three dozen arrows for not a whole lot of money, and it doesn't really matter if you bend them or break them. Now, if you are really worried about the apocalypse, then you can always stockpile XX75s. Why you would do that, I don't know. But I hope that this is helpful to you guys if you actually are thinking about getting into archery or you had ever wondered about how you would go about making archery viable in a post-apocalyptic scavenger fallout type scenario. Now I suppose if I'm going to tell you to buy a flipper rest or look for a flipper rest, I need to show you the packaging. This is the NAP Flipper Rest 2. That's what it looks like. This is the right hand model and it literally costs under $15 after tax in most sporting goods stores. Now of course with five finger apocalyptic discount that bow, those arrows, they're probably going to be overlooked by people. And here's hoping you never actually have to scavenge for your weapons. Speaking of looking cool, it's damn hard not to look cool in some aviators. As always, God bless all my sportsmen of America. Join the NRA to protect our rights. Please check out my friends over at LegallyConcealed.org. Thank you very much those of you involved in law enforcement. And those of you serving in the military, and thanks for watching Tech Scrabner Outdoors. If you like this video, stay tuned, rate, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter for more Tech Scrabner Outdoors misadventures.